Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden and we're going to revisit one of my favourite Swedish breweries again. So for this review we are going to return to Brewski Microbrewery and we're having a taste of a collaboration beer that they did with Finback Brewery who are from Glendale in New York over in America. So this one is the Meerkat Madness, it's an IPA coming in at 6% ABV and they've added it mangoes and apricots to this one. So this one was released through Seisten Volaga on the uh, 1st of February 2019 and I actually don't know whether this one was one of the small partiers or whether it was actually one of the um the local releases actually they had both of them on the same day uh, for some reason this time so I'm really not sure which one this actually was but I can tell you for sure that it was released uh, on the 1st of February 2019 so very much looking forward to trying this one the fruit beers and the fruit IPAs and stuff of course is a style that, um, that Brewski I have I know do very very well from personal experience and the Finback Brewery this will be my first encounter them so as I always say it's always cool to try uh, new beers from different parts of America so very much looking forward to trying this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brewski and my future reviews that I can hopefully do from Finback Brewery. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers of course but I've reviewed a number of things from Brewski before. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you and another one for all the American beers as well. Both are being constantly added to and this beer of course will appear in both of those since it is half Swedish, half American. And as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brewski first off then since these guys are the home brewery. So Brewski were founded back in 2014 in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the southern part of Sweden. So the founders of the company are Marcus Jarmusson, Johan Britson, Alfred Olsen and Robin Skoglund, all of whom were largely inspired to get into craft beer because of the West Coast American craft beers, although this brewery of course have evolved to be more of a kind of New England style brewery these days. But Marcus was originally associated with the High Nose brand of beer which was brewed at the Huguenus Brewery, a little bit to the northwest of Helsingborg and some of those beers of course are still brewed up there, it's their more kind of um, in your face sort of range from the Huguenus Brewery, um, but all of the Brewski beers are now brewed at the uh, at the Brewski Brewery in the old train yard in Helsingborg, which has a capacity now of around 100,000 litres of beer per month. In 2016 they also started their own beer festival which was called Brewski Val and the first time they had over 40 different breweries. I attended it for the first time in 2017, I did it again in 2018 and I will certainly be doing it once more in 2019. But they also open up their brewery, they used to open up their brewery once a month as, uh, as a bar but now they've also got their um, their own restaurant kind of bar type thing now in the city as well which is called Barsky and that serves ramen and a lot of the different Brewski craft beers that you can't necessarily get through say Stimbolaga. As I've told you before the Swedish monopoly system in some ways it works very very well in other ways not so much and one of the problems for craft breweries over here in Sweden is that because of all the paperwork and bureaucracy and things like that it's very difficult for them to get their new beers into uh, say Stimbolaga at times but yeah these guys probably one of the better known Swedish craft breweries these days and they've got a very good reputation and rightly so in my opinion as well. So if you're really interested in your big kind of hazy New England style IPAs then uh, Brewski are definitely one of the breweries that you want to check out. I've had some awesome awesome beers from uh, from these guys over the last little while. Conan the Barbarian is the one that always kind of uh, springs to mind with them but yeah pretty much any IPA if you like sort of fruit more fruity IPAs as well they've got their Fever series which is definitely worth checking out and they're always releasing, they've always got a new release kind of every two or three months or something like that so if you want to try some Swedish craft beers and you like your IPAs you can't really go wrong with Brewski so make sure if you want to learn a little bit more you check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that as well and keep up to date with all of the latest goings on but as I say one of the better known Swedish craft breweries these days so anyway on to the Finback Brewery and as I mentioned at the start of the video this is my very very first encounter with these guys but from what I gather they do seem to have built 
quite a big reputation for themselves over in New York. So Finback Brewery are based in the Glendale area of New York, which is to the east of Manhattan. I think it's actually officially on Long Island, but they were founded by Basil Lee, who's a former architect, and Kevin Stafford, who was a graphic artist, but they were also both quite avid home brewers. But the company was founded back in 2011, although it took them quite a while to find a location until they settled on their current brewery in 2013, and they produced their first beers there in 2014 with a tap room opening up soon after. And apparently these guys were very close friends with the guys over at like, uh, over at Other Half Brewing and uh, Bronx Brewing and all of these things. Apparently within the New York and the city area, the craft brewery uh, scene is very, very kind of tight knit. But apparently the name Finback for these guys comes from their location. So they're located about a 30 minute walk from the nearest subway station because the two lines just kind of diverge apart. And so these guys are right in the middle and they call themselves basically a beached whale because of this. But originally they were going to call the brewery Narwhal, um, but then Sierra Nevada came out with their Imperial Stout, of course. Initially, Sierra Nevada had apparently agreed to uh, to change the name of this beer, but then it went on to win medals, and it did very, very well. And the guys at Finback were actually advised, you know, you could, um, you, you know, you could fight this, but it would be a very, very difficult process. But they just decided, you know, we'll actually change this, and we'll go... Um, for, uh, for Finback Brewery, and this of course all happened before they'd actually opened the doors to their brewery right enough. But over the last few years they've been gradually expanding and they've been, uh, event they eventually hope to open up another facility um, further out of the city. They want to have, a, they say that they want to have a little farm and uh, focus on pairing food with different beers. But um, yeah, apparently they're both really quite into Belgian beers, they also like their IPAs, so they brew quite a wide variety of different styles. If you have a little look on their website there's quite a lot of different beers listed there. And um, yeah, they've been fairly successful since they, they've kind of started up, been constantly expanding um, their capacity just by moving things around within their brewery, if you like. But um, they do seem to have a very good reputation in the New York area, as I said, and it's always cool to introduce you guys on the channel here to uh, new breweries from different parts of America, because we don't get all that many of the different things over here right enough. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Finback Brewery just now. If you want to learn a little bit more, do check out the brewery website in the description below, and you can follow them on Facebook and things like that too and that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on and all the latest releases from them but yeah two very good breweries um, involved in this beer by all accounts Brewski I know from personal experience and Finback I've heard some very good things about I know the craft beer scene in New York at the moment is very strong with the likes of other half and Bronx brewery Finback and there, there's been a, there's a couple of other ones, of course, that don't quite come into my head when I'm filming this uh, when I'm filming this review for you. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. And as I said, both brewery websites are in the video description below if you want to investigate for yourself further. But yeah, on the side here it says, "Meerkat madness is an impression is an expression when someone yells or drops something loudly in a cube farm, and people's heads pop up over the cubicle walls to see what's going on. Or in this case, when our friends from Finback Brewery in Brooklyn, New York, came by and dropped." a shitload of real fruit into our collaboration brew. The result is a New England India Paleo with fresh and fruity flavours of mango and apricots. And that was going to be the next thing I was going to say. It's a 6% New England IPA with mango and apricots added to it. So yeah, should be very, very nice this one. It's got some of that kind of classic, almost minimalist brewski style artwork on it. I do like the white backgrounds and the and the artwork that they put into their beers. Um, you can see on the side here, here are the two brewery symbols. Just let the camera focus on that for a minute. Bruski, of course, have got their little guy over here, and he is also on the bottle cap. And you do sometimes get ones that are black with the white guy um, on top of it as well, and sometimes it's uh, the opposite way around. But yeah, a really nicely presented beer, this one. It's in one of these little stubby bottles, which are good for recycling, that Bruski like to use. So um, yeah, without further ado then, let's get this guy out, and we'll get on to the tasting. Very curious to see what this beer has in store. So yeah, nice little bit of smoke on the opening, and we'll get it out and into the glass. And I'll tell you straight away, those mangoes and apricots definitely jump straight out of the bottle at you. But yeah, that looks really nice. But I wouldn't expect anything else from Brewski. You're going to get a big hazy beast of a beer when it comes to these guys. So yeah, as you can see, and as you would have expected from a New England IPA, this one has poured a lovely kind of fruity... Uh, hazy, fruity, juicy colour. There's a solid finger, uh, finger and a half of a frothy, I would say cream coloured head on this one. Actually, I don't think that's a perfect white head. I think it's more of a creamy coloured head. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the, uh, the side of the glass there and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that, that head as well. But you I mean, overall, in terms of it being a New England IPA, 
Nothing overall really surprising about this one in terms of its appearance. If I hold it up to the light, it's definitely leaning towards a kind of um, quite hazy, kind of yellowy sort of thing, kind of a sort of pineapple-y um, colour more than anything else. More like kind of pineapple juice or mango juice or something like that. But a lot of these fruit juices, when you mash them up, you know they are a fairly similar colour. But to put it kind of bluntly, it's a slightly more yellow IPA, but at that it's quite a bit of a darker yellow. So yeah, nothing overly surprising about this one in terms of its appearance. As I said, if I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see there's very little to, to this beer in terms of transparency. But yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Oh yeah. So that smells really nice. I mean, straight away, um, to be honest, this is one of these beers where the aroma is pretty much what you would expect. You know, you've got the mangoes, you've got the apricots in this one, you've got that lovely juicy kind of fruity quality. I suspect there's a bit of citra in here because you can detect a little bit of a kind of hoppy complexity underneath it. But the juicy mangoes and the apricots come straight out of the aroma at this one at you. But you can get a little bit of... Um, you can get just a little bit of a kind of fruity complexity in there. I wouldn't be surprised if there's either a bit of Galaxy or a bit of Simcoe in here. To be honest, in the way the aroma's coming out, I'm leaning a little bit more towards Simcoe. To be honest. Um, Simcoe, and pa uh, Simcoe and Galaxy, of course, are very well known for giving you the likes of the, um, the kind of passion fruity flavours. And the Galaxy, of course, can give you a little bit of pineapple. I think there is a little touch of one of those two in here. There might even be a little bit of citra as well, because you can pick up the more oily mango notes. If you add fruit to the beer, of course, what tends to happen in the taste is that um, the juicy fruity qualities will, will kind of suppress a little bit of the IBUs from the green side of the hops, you know, the grassy and the floral components of the beer, and it just gives it a bit more of that juicy edge. But with this one in the aroma, you can definitely detect the very fresh fruity notes out of it, but at the same time you can also pick out the more oily fruity notes that have obviously been extracted from the hops. And for me, there's a good bit of a more oily mango to this one. I think there is a bit of passion fruit in there as well. And you can also pick out a little bit of a kind of lychee, gooseberry sort of thing, which makes me wonder if there is a little bit of citra being used in here. And I wouldn't be surprised, you know, Brewski um, do like their citra. Let's just say that. Citra is used quite a lot in their beers. But yeah, it does, in terms of its aroma, it does come across as very fruity and juicy. In terms of the green side of the hops, you know, I would say it leans a little bit more towards the grassy side of things, but you do get elements of the floral uh, aspect of the hops as well. And yeah, on the malty side of things, you can get a lovely kind of uh, wheaty, bready quality out of this one. And there's a little bit of a kind of oaty creaminess to the beer too, and a little bit of a kind of biscuity quality. Um, it does lean more towards the kind of creamy, wheaty side of things rather than anything else. It's not got too much in the way of a sort of uh, bready quality, or and it's not too sweet in its malt way. It, it does smell a little bit more creamy, and again, that kind of suits the, the sort of juicy fruits that are coming out of this beer, the apricots and the mangoes. In some ways, this the aroma of this beer actually does resemble, you know, a fruit yogurt or something like this. It reminds me a little bit of the... the, the um, the munch bunch yogurts that my mum used to put in my lunchbox when I was a wee one going to school, you know, um, the apricot uh, yogurt, it really does remind me of that actually. So, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer, because that's always half the experience when it comes to craft beer and sakes and whiskies and stuff like that. This one, to be honest, isn't doing that much surprising, but you know, it's always a joy to kind of smell some of these New England IPAs. But without further ado, then let's get stuck into this beer. So, this one is the Meerkat Madness, a New England IPA at 6% ABV with apricots and mangoes from Brewski in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden, and the Finback Brewery as a collaboration brewery from Glendale in Brooklyn over in New York. Let's get stuck into this beer. Slange, skull. That's nice, actually. It's definitely one of the more kind of um, juicy and smooth IPAs I've had from uh, from Brewski in the last little while. This one um, is is really quite different, actually. You know, some quite a lot of the Brewski New England IPAs they have that lovely creamy quality to them, but they do still have a little bit of a hoppy kick. This is a completely different 
can uh, this is a complete change of pace I think for Brewski which is very interesting and take my, you know take it straight I'll, I'll say straight away with this beer it is really quite nice actually I'll say on the basis of one sip I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again if you get the beer to the back of your palate you will get a little bit of that kind of hoppy bitterness to it which is what I was looking for but overall, as it stands, it's a really um, nice kind of tasty beer, this one. You know, if you want something that's nice, juicy and easy to drink, then this one is certainly going to hit the spot for you. Um, the malt base is really nice and creamy, and the juiciness of the fruits kind of mixes in with that. These fruits that they've actually added to the beer. This one, for me, gets a thumbs up. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. But let's uh, try and break down the flavour a little bit then. So in the middle of your palate, you can feel there's that nice, um, that, that sort of wheaty um, malt base. That just blankets the middle of your palate there. The further into the taste you go, you can feel the oaty flavours just building on top of that and it becomes a little bit more creamy in its mouthfeel. Yeah, I would stick with that on this one. It definitely becomes a little bit more kind of creamy and there's almost a little bit of a slightly lactose vibe to this one it, it sweetens up I think that creaminess sweetens up a little bit in the the malt base but I don't think they've actually added lactose to this one um, no it, it doesn't say you know there's not any um, there's not anything to add to it I think it says it's got a little touch of rye in it as well barley wheat oats and rye so um, yeah no I'm not picking up too much of the, sli the slightly spicier character that you can get from the rye right enough in this one, but um, it's I'm finding this beer really does sweeten up the further into the flavour you go. But yeah, I do like where this one's going, but yeah, nice kind of smooth wheaty malt base in the middle of your palate, on top of that little touch of the kind of... Um, more creamy notes from the oats and then as I say that sweetens up a little bit and gives the impression of lactose the further you go into the flavour but it's not quite as sweet as lactose if you like but you can and now that I think about the rye you can feel that there is a little bit of a kind of grainy quality pushing its way out of this beer the further you go into the flavour and I think there's almost a little tiny touch of a slightly biscuity sweetness in the very very centre of your palate um, but overall it is quite nice this one so in the back corners of the palate then um, teeny teeny little bit of earthiness there but as you come further forward along the sides of your tongue there is a little bit of a floral aromaticity to this one but then as you get towards the front corners of your palate that almost completely fades away and you can get a nice little bit of a juicy it, it, it does you can detect a little bit of the grassy components of the hops in there but mainly it's a nice sort of um, it's the apricots and the mangoes really just dominating that part. As I said, when you add fruit to the brew, it really just suppresses some of the IBUs of the beer and gives you that juicy, fruity edge to the tongue. But, you know, overall, as I say, the flavours in this beer are very, very nice. And behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. Yeah, I really like, I, I just like how everything goes together in this one. It's definitely one of these beers that, you know, when you read, oh, it's a New England IPA with mangoes and apricots. It's it's one of these ones that it kind of does what it says on the tin, but, you know, it does it very well. And you can't really ask for much more than that. I mean, the New England IPAs have been around long enough that we know what to expect from them. But these breweries still keep putting out really, in, really nice things with different fruits and different hops and you know, slightly different malts and yeast strains and stuff like this, and we still drink them and we still enjoy them. So, you know, that's the kind of thing you can say about these beers. But this oily bubble behind the front curve of the palate then, um, I think I would maybe have to revise my statement earlier where I thought it was Simcoe or Galaxy that they put into this one. I'm not getting so much in the way of passion fruit out of this beer. I would suspect that maybe it's just Citra. Because behind the front curve of the palate, the more oily flavours lean a little bit more. They, they definitely have a little bit more just of a straight up kind of mango flavour. I think it's just a citra hopped beer, this one, to be honest with you. Because it's a nice kind of juicy mango there. It does have a little tiny, tiny touch of a, an almost grapefruity quality there at the back of that oily bubble that I was talking about. But the further you go into the flavour, you get a little bit more lychee um, and you get a little bit of an almost gooseberry flavour just on the front tips of the palate too. But I mean, overall... 
This is a really nice, quite easy drinking IPA. This one, um, it leans towards the more juicy, fruity side of things, and it's got a nice, very quite sweet, creamy edge to it as well. So if that's the sort of thing that ticks your boxes in this style, you certainly are going to enjoy this one. But you've got two very good breweries involved here, two breweries that know what they're doing when it comes to New England IPAs. Uh, Finback Brewery, as I say, um, they've, they've made a good couple of these beers as well and Brewski it seems to be almost their speciality actually um, so yeah this beer is pretty much one of these ones that it kind of does what it says on the tin but it does it pretty well in my uh, in my opinion I would certainly I certainly wouldn't drink this one again is it my favourite IPA that I've had from Brewski I don't know if I'd go that far but I think uh, Conan the Barbarian for me is the one that Brewski still have to beat, you know, that was an absolute monster of a beer. But that said, they have produced some very, very solid um, New England IPAs in recent times as well. So if you get the chance to try any of their New England IPAs, I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend that you do. And Finback, by all accounts, as I said, are a very good brewery as well. Hopefully I can get out to the US and try some of their beers for myself at some point. I'd love to do a dedicated review to this brewery in the future as well. But in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say this is a mid-bodied beer. Carbonation is quite smooth in this one. Yeah, carbonation is quite smooth. Um, the further that you get into the aftertaste, it does smooth. That you do get a little bit more of an oily mouthfeel. It's kind of a balance between slightly oily and creamy. This one, good little bit of hoppy bitterness. But that said, I think you'd be lucky to get about twenty IBUs out of this beer, maybe twenty-five at a push. Um, the malt base has a good balance between sweetness and creaminess, as I was saying earlier. Little touch of sweetness in the middle, but mainly a kind of smooth, creamy quality to the beer, and lo some lovely juicy fruity notes to it as well so yeah just have a go at this beer for yourself and see what you think and as i always say it's cool to try beers that are involved in different breweries from different parts of america so i've enjoyed my first encounter with finback and i've had another very enjoyable encounter with brewski so to me that makes for a good review but let's leave it at that for this one so this one was the meerkat madness a new england ip at six percent abv with apricots and mangoes added to the brew from brewski in helsingborg here in skona in the south of sweden and the finback brewery my first encounter with them from Greendale, Brooklyn in New York over in America. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Brewski and your favourite beers are from Finback as well. And hopefully I can return to both breweries in the fairly near future. I'm sure I'll do Brewski, but Finback might be a little bit more of a push. But thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys later. Make sure you check out my social media and have a go at this beer. The Meerkat Madness from Brewski in Helsingborg in Sweden and Finback from Brooklyn over in New York. Until the next time, Slanja just now and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, skull.